Hello, I'm Adam Harder, uh, Chief Investment Officer, Financial Enhancement Group, along with Andrew Thrasher, Chartered Market Technician and Portfolio Manager. So thankful you gave us a few minutes of your time where we're going to go over a few of the things that we talked about in this week's investment allocation meeting. I've got a few bullet points here to share with you in advance. But before that, I'll tell you one thing that's not on the list, and that is whether we're in a, a recession or not a recession. Uh, you might have expected us to have the GD print up here. Uh, it's not for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's rarely a topic we put that much emphasis on the gross domestic product in any environment. Uh, it's it's backward looking and it's heavily revised going forward. And for those two reasons, and for that matter, it's not a heavy influence into the Federal Reserve. So for that instance, it, it doesn't really add that much into where the economy is going. It tells us where it has been. Uh, the other thing I would add is there's been so much debate of whether we're in a recession or not a recession. Uh, and our point of view is that it doesn't really matter what you label it. What matters is where we go from here. I would say uh, from our uh, seat that there is credible, there would be a very credible argument to be made to say that we are in a recession. When you get two negative prints of GDP, uh, there's never been one of those periods in history in the United States that has happened that hasn't been labeled a recession. So uh, that for it's it's perfectly, I think, rational to call this period a recession. On the other hand, there's a large camp that says uh, this has been entirely driven and unique with an inventory correction. Uh, there's been so many things about the past couple of years that have been entirely unique. That makes a lot of sense, too. When you have an inventory correction, it's not necessarily fed through uh, through all the forward looking pieces uh, of the GDP. The most important thing in our book is between now and the next several weeks, we're going to get several key sets of data, which will be more informative to the Federal Reserve and where they go. Uh, initially, the market traded heavily on it on the recessionary type uh, move. But the reality is, I think the Fed will care about uh, more pieces. And I'll ask Andrew to chime in with his opinion, too. But the Fed will have another uh, few pieces that will be more influential than how the GDP report is. So, so Andrew, I'll give you a, a chance to add in uh, from your seat and whether you would say recession, not recession. Yeah, as Adam said, we had the two negative quarters. Typically, that qualifies. Um, we've yet to have a recession that doesn't meet that that definition, or at least when that happens. Um, we don't get too bogged down with, with the definition of it. Um, we'll leave that for historians when they write about this time period, whether they, they, they classify this as a recession or not. I think I liken it to um, when military generals are, are in the, the heat of battle, that they're not worried about whether they're going to call it a war skirmish, a conflict. Um, or what, what the categorization of what they're doing is, they're worried about the boots on the ground and the things that are in front of them. And I think that's the same for us within the market, much different context, but we're looking at the current data that's in front of us, the things that's impacting the market, whether we're seeing bullishness or bearishness, whether the data is improving or getting worse from, the, from a market perspective. And that's where our focus is. Well, again, leave the historians to write about whether this is classified as a recession or not. We're worried and focused more on what the market's doing, things that are impacting your portfolio. Very well said. Uh, and to, to that end, we, we look to the Federal Reserve. So we'll stay in the, the same city. We'll stay in Washington, D.C., uh, if you will, because that's ultimately... Um, uh, the group of politicians, or not politicians, but uh, I'd say bureaucrats that will ultimately define it. Uh, but staying in Washington, we'll look at the Federal Reserve because that does um, really weigh heavily on markets, how they proceed from here. Uh, so we got the announcement last week that the Fed was going to raise by another 75 basis points or 0.75%, making this one of the most aggressive Federal Reserve actions of all time. You can see on the right panel, in 2022, it is the red line showing you the steepness and how quickly uh, interest rates have risen. These are the short term overnight rates by the Fed now clearing 2%. And as far as we know, they have a plan to continue to that. That is shaped by the left lines. Uh, you can see each and every Federal Reserve meeting go back to December uh, and, and how they expect rates to be over time going through 2023. Uh, and the expectation is that they will continue to rise. If you look at June, that is the, the top line there. Uh, by 2023, they expect them to approach 3%. Uh, and so that is the Fed that we have it. Now, uh, the two GDP reports introduce a lot of speculation that the Federal Reserve will pivot. Uh, the Fed actually um, 
uh, lent some credit credence to that by not saying a whole lot about their plans for raising interest rates going forward. Our opinion, that would be a mistake to lean or try to decipher too much of their intent into that. All we know so far is that their number one focus is inflation, and that hasn't changed. Uh, moving now to emerging market stocks. Now, this might surprise some of you. It actually uh, caught me by surprise to see the, the totality of it. We know emerging markets and, and international stocks as a whole have been weak for a very long time. Just how weak? Actually, we can go to their peak of 2007, uh, October 2007, just like in our markets. Uh, but you fast forward, the purple line is the price return. But if you add in dividends, that'll always add to your return over time. Uh, even when you add in those dividends now, emerging markets have gone nowhere. A total return of less than 0% going all the way back. So they really haven't recovered the principal uh, going back that far. Uh, just a truly astounding, you know, we talked about the last decade for the S&P 500 uh, here at the 2000s. Uh, emerging markets are going through that version uh, themselves. Uh, like so many things, it's just when the, a group or an asset class gets so hot, that was emerging markets in 2006, 2007. It was the absolute place to be. Uh, brought in a lot of investors a little too late to the game who are still waiting to get back uh, to even. And in our view, you will you will most often find some allocation to international holdings, which includes emerging markets. It's important for diversification, uh, but we still don't see an opportunity to heavily increase that exposure just yet. As the chart showed you, when you have something uh, vacant for 13 years, You'd think there'd be promise at some point in time, and we stand ready to change that, but not until the markets give us some sort of indication they're ready to turn. Now over to our markets in the S&P 500. And Andrew, this is a chart that uh, he shares with us frequently, and uh, I'll ask him to go over uh, for this week and update us. Yeah, for those that have been watching the market cover for a little while, this chart should look a little familiar. We talk about it every couple of weeks, provide you with an update of, of what we're seeing here domestically, specifically with large caps, we often look at the S&P 500, which is the 500 largest companies. And so here we have a daily chart. There's a lot going on here. We're really just going to focus on the far right-hand side of this chart, the latest data here. So what we have is we had a really nice rebound off those June lows. The market has come back higher. Um, part of that was attributable to, as Adam was talking about earlier, the Fed hinting that maybe they're going to pause interest rate hikes, kind of evaluate the data that caused the market to get a little bit more confident. That kind of gives the latest leg. We also just saw a lot of bearishness in June and July, and a lot of that was starting to get unwound. So a lot of people, there was a lot of sellers, but there weren't a lot of buyers left. And so when you have that teeter-totter kind of becomes unbalanced, you see the market begin to correct in the opposite direction. In this case, it's been prices rising. So now we must evaluate, are we starting to see the start to a new uptrend, or is this just a little bit of noise and whipsaw to the upside before we go back down. So first we wanna look at the different price levels that we wanna first see. A lot of technicians like myself were watching 4,200 on the S&P 500. The reason that level was so important is that was the prior major swing high back in June. It was also the, the low there in March. You can see the blue vertical line that we're, we're getting closer to now. So we wanna see how does price respond when we get there? Um, looking at momentum, we've had momentum rise. That's the bottom panel on this chart. Momentum has risen back to that prior high, again, that we saw um, after that, that bounce in March. So momentum kind of at that same level, price is starting to get maybe near some, some levels of resistance. Um, so we're kind of taking it day by day, looking for market leadership, looking at the, the risk appetite of the market, trying to evaluate to see if we can get better clarity on are we starting to see more buyers come into this market? When we see more buyers come in, that's what gets price driven higher. Again, doesn't matter the classification of a recession. It doesn't matter where Fed officials are flying to. It doesn't matter of all the other externalities. We really want to look at the supply and demand of the market because that's at the end of the day what's going to drive the prices higher or lower from a day to day basis. And so right now we're kind of we've seen a nice bounce. Um, we're still cautiously optimistic is probably the best way to describe it. There's another analyst uh, that called this market a run, don't walk market. And I think that's a really good way to describe it. We don't want to be um, fearful and try to run away. At the same time, we don't want to try to run and be extremely bullish right, uh, right from the get go. We want to be cautious. We want to walk. And so I think that to describe this as a walk, don't run type situation is a good way to classify it. Hopefully we do get back to that 4,200 level in the S&P. We break above it and we can kind of readjust any changes we need to make in our portfolios, um, either by buying or selling or whatnot 
based off of where we're currently positioned. Um, but we're taking it, uh, like I said, from day to day and seeing how the market uh, develops from here. Very good. And uh, you might think we, we gave the, the word recession its last uh, standing in the meeting. Just make one more comment. And that is you can't change how people feel. And certain uh, individuals got a right to feel whether this is a recession or not, which takes us to the, the last point. And there is absolutely no doubt that a wide swath of Americans rightly feel this as a recession. And you can see that through the inflation adjusted wages. Uh, and Andrew, what you shared us here, it just brings to high highlight uh, how painful it's been for a majority, whatever we end up calling this period. Yeah, so we got the when we got the latest GDP numbers, we also get another glimpse into the labor market, um, which and also from an inflation standpoint, we're able to see what's the it's called the co um, the employee cost index, and it's the how much people are getting paid, whether they're getting paid more or less over the last three months, or looking at um, over the last year, comparing June to June, for example. And what we're seeing is we're seeing that that employment costs are going up. People are making higher wages. Unfortunately, when we have to account for inflation, it's not as much as inflation. That's why you can see on the far right of this, this, uh, this chart, it's actually going down. When we look at inflation-adjusted wages, it's, it's moving lower. And actually, one of the lowest levels, this chart goes back to 2001, one of the lowest levels in, uh, in quite a while. So we are seeing consumers, um, let the labor market be stressed, um, where they're the, the money that they're having to spend on things like fuel and groceries and, and just everyday necessities has gone up in, in price and their incomes not, uh, for a large swath of Americans are not rising um, proportionally with that. And so they are seeing their own budgets stressed. And we're seeing that as well in, in a lot of the, the credit card data, the savings data. Um, at this point, we are still seeing consumers are spending. Um, we got As we get a lot of the earnings announcements from some of the credit card companies, specifically Visa announced that they are still seeing a lot of consumer activity. They're still charging on their credit cards. Um, that that momentum, that drive to spend hasn't stopped yet, um, but it's definitely probably not a lot of happy swipes of that, that Visa card uh, when they're filling up their gas tank or buying groceries or, or different uh, spending activities. And a large part of that stress is coming because we are seeing that wages aren't keeping up with inflation and that can continue to put stress on the consumer and put stress on economic growth. As always, very well said. Thank you, Andrew. And thank all to you, to all of you for uh, giving us a few minutes of your time. If you haven't seen us, uh, please give us a call, uh, schedule your meeting, or we've got a QR code up here for you. 800-928-4001 is the number. And then lastly, each and every week, we put out a radio show over the airwaves on WIBC and a few other stations. And as always, you can get them through however you get your podcast. Thanks again and have a great weekend.